Hey everybody, I'm here at Legoland. This way, this way, somewhere behind me for my very first visit. I never got to visit Cypress Gardens either, so I'm very excited about this. Even though apparently I might be too tall for most of the rides, I don't know. But already it's as cute as the button. The hotel is adorable. There are Legos everywhere. Hold on, let me get to see if we can get the hotel in there a little bit. So it's just a wonderful place here. Love it, love it, love it. Except it's too sunny. Let's just with Florida in the sun. All right, let's go. Legoland Florida is located in Winter Haven, Florida, and it's about 45 minutes from Walt Disney World and 45 minutes from Tampa Bay. Legoland opened on October 15, 2011 on the site, the former site, of Cypress Gardens. The total park is about 145 acres and is mostly geared towards children aged 2 to 12. But that doesn't mean that adults and theme park fans won't have a lot of fun here also. I've wanted to visit Legoland Florida for a while to experience what a Legoland park is and to see the history of Cypress Gardens. Plus, there are four roller coasters here. Most of the park that you actually visit is Legoland, and you don't run into the older parts until you reach the water ski area in Pirate's Cove. The first section of the park is called The Beginning, and it's a cute introduction to the park. You'll find most of the shops and restaurants in this area. There are plenty of photo opportunities and several neat moments to get you excited about your visit. Depending on your group and their ages, you'll want to head to very specific areas first. Most of the attractions for the younger set are very slow loading, so you'll need to prioritize those before anything else. One of the first areas that I ran into was the Duplo Valley. Oh, I thought I was going to die from the cuteness overload. These attractions are really geared towards the youngest set, like Duplos, and they are extremely fanciful. The Duplo train and tractor are rides that the kids will enjoy, while the Duplo farm is a very large indoor play area. Lego Kingdom was next with the Royal Joust ride. Now, sadly, I was way too tall for this one, and the maximum age is 12. Oh well. The first ride I did was the Lost Kingdom Adventure in the Land of Adventure area. And it's also the first time that I ran into one of the play areas in the cubes. And these are fenced off areas where the kids can play for a few moments while the parent actually waits in the queue. Basically, the kid enters near the beginning of the queue and can play while the parents go through a few of the switchbacks. Lost Kingdoms is a really cute Sally Dark Ride shooter that's similar to Buzz Lightyear at the Magic Kingdom. My only issue is that I kept forgetting to aim because the ride was so adorable. After that, I headed to LEGO City to check out a few of the driving rides. The first one I did was simply called Boating School. This ride is basically a trackless, self-driving boat ride, and it was so much more fun to watch the kids as they were behind the wheel as they bumped into each other and they bumped into the walls and they got completely turned around. I spent more time just watching the boats as I did on any other attraction. And in some cases, I have no idea how the kids got so turned around. Again, I was too large for the Ford driving school, but it was still a lot of fun to watch. The kids get to watch a safety video, and then they practice real driving skills with electric vehicles. And kudos to Legos for having all electric vehicles. There were a, a few bumps, but I didn't see any major incidents. And I do wonder how many of these kids learned some of these behaviors from their parents.
I trekked up a hill to get my first coaster credit at Legoland, Florida. Flying School is a Vacoma suspended family coaster that was part of the original Cypress Garden and was called the Swamp Thing when it opened in 2004. And if you've ridden the Great Aerial Chase at any Cedar Fair Park, then you've ridden this coaster. It's a fun coaster for kids, but anyone over 5 foot 8 inches tall will also know it as a hanging bang. Ouch, my ears. I headed back to Lego City and checked out the Ford Junior Driving School. Again, this was so adorable. And they also had the NFPA Rescue Academy. This is a, a ride that kids are really going to love because they get to shoot water, but I believe the parents are going to find it as quite a workout. I went back over to the Land of Adventure to check out Coaster Saurus. It's a wooden coaster that was built for Cypress Gardens in 2004 and was originally named the Three Hurricanes because of the three hurricanes that survived in 2004. It's an American Coaster Enthusiast Coaster Classic, so I was very excited to add this credit. When Legoland reopened it, the original cars were replaced with mini Lanium Flyers from Great Coasters International, and the cars really are small. I enjoyed the ride, it's a great wooden coaster, but I barely fit into the car with my six foot frame. Yeah, I had to hold my knees the whole time. Ninjago World is new for 2017 and has a few play areas for older kids that are very interactive and semi-challenging. And there's also Ninjago The Ride, which is one of the most impressive dark ride shooters that I've ever experienced. It is 3D and you use your hands instead of a light gun. Okay, so I just finished Ninjago, which was awesome. I had a blast with it. My forearms are very tired because you don't have controllers. You use your hands in a field, which uh, works just like Toy Story from there, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, the walls have projection mapping on them, and there were so many cool things. Really enjoyed it. I headed back towards Lego Kingdoms to ride the Dragon Coasters. Lego Kingdoms is a, a neat area that's themed around knights and dragons and castles. And the Dragon Coaster itself is one of the better executed family coasters. It's a Vacoma Junior Coaster that was originally built in 2004 as the Okeechobee Rampage. When it opened in Dragon in 2011, a dark ride section was built before the lift hill. The coaster part is fun, but the dark ride before the lift hill is very cute. It's well worth a ride, even if you're not sure about coasters. The World of Chima is next, and there's a large water battle ride that looked like fun, but I just watched from afar. You know, no sense in getting my camera wet, right? I was hungry for a snack, and Granny's apple fries were amazing. It's almost worth the trip to Legoland alone just for this treat. There are quite a few indoor areas for the kids to play. Some of them require registration, and they actually have some of the logo robotics, as well as some indoor interactive areas. And of course, there are Legos to build with everywhere. I'll cover Pirate's Cove and Cypress Gardens in another video, but you can't miss the water skiing show. It's very silly, but it's a lot of fun, and the skiers are extremely talented. There's also a huge area called Lego Miniland, which has those amazing Lego displays of famous buildings and cities. But I'm gonna cover that in its own video. Of course, it wouldn't be a visit to a theme park without me checking out the restrooms. Everyone has a small sink and mirror just for the kids. 
Okay, well, I had a fun day here at Legoland, Florida. Really enjoyed myself. It was awesome. Oh, it was awesome. Thank you. It was awesome. Everything was awesome. <laughs> Everything was awesome. I only got to do two of the three, no, three of the four coasters. The mouse coaster was down, but I really enjoyed it. Had a good time. And everything here was so adorable and so cute. Legos everywhere. Everything was awesome. Exactly. Um, really do think the park is geared towards parents with much younger kids. Doesn't mean I didn't have a good time. I did. As you can see, the Lego bricks behind me everywhere. So it was great. So if you're in Central Florida and you got little kids, definitely come out here. I think you have a lot of fun. See ya. I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and thank you so much for watching my video on Legoland Florida. Have you had a chance to visit the park? Did you ever get to visit it when it was called Cypress Gardens? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on theme parks, roller coasters, and more. I'll see you in the next video.